worthy, you're so glorious, you're so mighty, Father. We just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. Your many blessings, your hand upon us, your spirit leading and guiding us, Father. We know today, Father, that we are your people, that we are the true temples of the Holy Ghost. You live and dwell inside each and every one of us. And, Father, as we come before you this morning, definitely boldly, definitely confidently, because we can come to you boldly to the throne of grace this morning yes. to obtain all the mercy, all the grace that we need, all the help that we need during our time of need. We can do that because of Jesus Christ and the blood that was shed, the life that was given. And we thank God today we're not alone. We thank God today we've got help here on this side. And the Holy Spirit is going to move freely. And on that side, we know, Father, that Jesus Christ is seated at your right hand, ever living, to make intercession for us, Father. We yes. thank you. That the word says that if God be for us, who can be against us? And Father, I know today, Father, I don't know every situation, every set of circumstances. But I know that many here have come in, Father, and they've been facing many opposition, much opposition, many things in their life. Many have been weighed down. Many have been discouraged. Many things going on that I may not know about, but you do. And we thank you, Father, as we set our faith this morning. The word that needs to come forth is coming forth. The anointing and flow of the Holy Spirit is available. We're going to yield. We're going to let go and flow with the Holy Spirit. We say this morning, Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. And Father, we say this by faith now in advance. No matter what you say, what you do, and the flow of the Holy Spirit that you lead us in, we thank you, Father, now by faith in the name of Jesus, that the people in this place, that no matter how they came in, they will not leave here like they came in Jesus' name. Yes. But they will leave here changed, challenged, and altered forever through and by the word of God that we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Yes. And by the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit, the anointing, the word says, breaks every yoke of bondage, every stronghold, no matter what the enemy desires to do. The word also says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty and there is freedom. And we thank you. That's the way that they're going to leave this church today. No matter how they came in, they're going to leave here with their joy restored and free in the Spirit by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit, these lives will be changed. But most importantly, your mighty name is going to be glorified, magnified, edified, and honored. And all that's said and done, we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated at this time. As you see, we're doing things differently this morning. I have to cut the music short. They're coming back up here. So we're going to follow the Holy Spirit. i got some things that I need to say about the Word before they come back up and before we minister to you. Because I found out in my life, in this ministry, every ministry, but this is the only one that I'm the pastor of, obviously, that God's plan is the best plan. God's way is the best way. And I want you to go to John chapter 16, verse 33. We've been talking about, teaching on, and preaching on love being the greatest need of all in the body of Christ. Well, still is. We're not ministering on that this morning. That's somebody that asked me yesterday. You know, we're ministering on love Sunday morning. I said, no, the Lord's already told me a different direction and how He wants to move. Why? Because you're here and God knows what you need. Amen? Yeah. Many of you, as I've said, and we're going to say more things as we go through the service, have been through many things, some recent, some maybe not so recent, but it's weighed you down, it's been a burden, it's been heavy, and this morning God wants you to leave here free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen? By the anointing and the Spirit. The title this morning is simply going to be this. Joy in the Lord. Joy in the Lord. The Lord is going to restore some of you guys' joy this morning. Matter of fact, He'll restore everybody's joy if you need it. Yes. Amen. And it's available and you receive by faith. But I need to give you the word first because God said so. And because Romans 10, 17 says what? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We're going to give you what God said in his word. It's going to build your faith up. The singer is going to come back up. We're going to tell you what to do and how to receive. And we're going to minister to you. And God's going to bless you today. Amen. John 16 verse 33. We can read the words of Jesus uh, initially here in the King James. And then we're going to read the Amplified. Y'all ready? Y'all there? John 16 33. Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Now I want you to put up the Amplified. We got the Amplified. It says this. 
I have told you, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me, this is God's word, so this is God's will, this is what God wants and what he desires in your life and in my life and in the life of every believer. Because it's the word of God, right? This is Jesus, not me. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Does God want you to have confusion? No. no, he's not the author of confusion, the word says, but of peace. Jesus said that you may have perfect peace and confidence. He wants you to have perfect peace and confidence. And then he said this. Th this is the first scripture. I've got two or three here, but that the Lord gave me for this service specifically. In the world, are you in the world? You're in the world. You're not of this world, but you are in this world. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have trials. You'll have distress and frustration. I would say today, ha have you been discouraged? Have you been frustrated? Have you been weighed down? Has the way been heavy? Jesus said this, but be of good cheer. You know God and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God, they never have told us to do anything that we couldn't do. He would be a just God. If he said, be of good cheer, he's made a way for us to be of good cheer, right? He said, but be of good cheer. He said, take courage, be confident, be certain, be undaunted. He said, I have overcome the world. Remember, we always say, he has overcame so we can overcome, right? He said, I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. So you might have come in discouraged, weighed down, depressed maybe. The enemy may be endeavoring to bring oppression uh, to you or upon you. We know that oppression is what Jesus came here to deal with. Amen. God's people being oppressed. We may look at that. We may not. But I'm just going to read some of my notes and go on down through here. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I don't have much to say this morning. We got some things to say. Then we got some things to do. Because God's going to show Himself big. Amen? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, while I'm talking, we'll go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. And these things, you say, well, you just read what you wrote down. I read them after a time of prayer, and it's what the Holy Spirit said. Mm -hmm. Many today have lost their joy for many different reasons, but God is going to set you free and restore your joy today. Mm -hmm. As I've been studying along these lines, as I'm teaching this morning, I'm just going to preach for a few minutes, but lest there's some wrong by definition of joy... He said the one thing that characterized the Christians of the New Testament was their joy. Yes. The fact is that joy is like the peace of God. Amen. The world cannot give it, neither can the world take it away. The world cannot give it. You say you don't know my situation today. I will never belittle your situation. I will never say that you're not facing something greater than I have faced. But I will say this. You are not facing anything that's bigger than your God. Amen. You're not. Amen? And I say that with faith in God. Not belittle anybody's problems or situations. That will benefit no one for us to do that. Amen? I, I might not have walked in your shoes. I might not have walked in your footsteps. So it may be wrong for me as a person or a pastor to say I know how you feel. But the reality of it is, is Jesus has walked where you're walking today. He has followed the path. He led the way for you and me, and he overcame so you and I can overcome. So as we look to him and put our trust and faith in him and depend upon the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit who's the helper in this earth, you can make it. Not maybe. You can make it. You shall make it. You say, I don't know how my life is going to get turned around. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct thy paths. You don't have to understand it. You, don't, you can come in here today with a major mess. You need to leave out of here trusting God. Right? You might have a, you say, well, I, I came with a mess, and I left with a mess. What's the difference? The difference is this. You were trying to figure it out, and it kept getting worse. You're trying to think about it, and it kept getting worse. You came here today, and the Holy Spirit of God intervened on your behalf. Why? Because God is love. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. He intervened. You might leave here facing the same problem you're saying. Your circumstances are the same, but now you're trusting a God that can see you through. You're trusting a God that no mountain is too high, no valley is too low, no opposition is great as God is. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Yes, it's true anyhow. We know it's true because it's God's Word. Thank God He's the author and the finisher. The work God's begun inside of you is well able to bring to fruition and completion. Yes. The only way you're going to fail is if you give up and quit. Amen? Amen? Yes, amen. 
We want to trust him. We're going over and not under. We're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Lender not a bar, right? Yes, amen. Yes, we are. Amen? amen? So it's neither the world can give it, nor the world can take it away. And it is a joy that passes all understanding, just like peace. And you say, well, what does that mean? It means it's something that you can have. It's from the inside out, even when your circumstances would dictate and somebody that is normal, maybe natural thinking, or the unsaved person in their life, maybe you, you can't explain why you got joy, why you have it, but you do. Because other people would say, well, there's no way that I could make it. How do you make it in that situation? You just simply say, I learned to trust God. Yeah. If I depend upon myself, I'll fail and go down. But as I learn to look at Jesus... Look at His Word and depend upon Him. Not only am I going to scrape by, scrape by, but I thank God. He always makes me triumphant in all things. Amen? Yes. Thank God. Thanks be unto God this morning who gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? Yes. Joy is a condition. The state of the soul due to being right with God. Yes. Joy is not happiness, but it produces happiness. Yes. People get those things mixed up. You can smile and you can laugh and feel like you weigh a thousand pounds inside. That's why I try to tell people all the time, you've got to be careful how you treat other people, how you take other people. You don't know what they're going through. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And if you be honest about it, you've been in that situation before when you wish somebody knew what you were going through. Yeah. When you wish somebody was in tune with the Spirit of God to realize that you were weighted down, that you were in the hardest time in your life, but maybe you went to church and went through the motions of life and you could put on a smile, but that's all it was, was a smile yeah. that you put on. Because on the inside, it was rough. Yeah. Amen? But thank God. God is good. Yeah. So this joy is not a happiness. It produces happiness. But we know it is a joy that passes all understanding. Now we are in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. It says this. Now the Lord is that spirit. And what the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. There is liberty. There is freedom. We're yielding to and depending upon the Holy Spirit of God this morning. And there is a liberty and a freedom in the anointing and in His presence. Amen? Look at Luke chapter 4. This is going to bear witness with your spirit just a minute. If it hadn't already. The Lord said this will not be. And of course I do not control who I minister to and who I pray for. There's God's part. There's my part as a minister. And then there's your part and the response by faith. Amen? But I know for a fact that although there are different people in here dealing with different issues that have brought you to the place that you're at, I know for a fact that there's many in here that need this message. Not one or two. If two people come up, I'll pray for them just like all of you come up. But at the same time, allow the Holy Spirit to have His way in your life. Allow God to intervene today and things do not have to be like they've been. Amen? Amen? So we're looking at, at Luke chapter 4, 18. The Lord Jesus Christ said this, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me. Now some people would say, well, that's the Spirit of the Lord. That's Jesus Christ, the Spirit upon Him. But you've got to understand, now Jesus is where? He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is the head of the body who makes up the body. We do. The church consists of Jesus being the head of the church, and you and I being the body. And in John 14, 12, it says that we're to do the works that he did, and also even greater works, because he goes to the Father. Yes. He went to the Father and sent the Holy Spirit, who the church is anointed of, and by now, so we're supposed to do what Jesus did. So you can't just take this and say, that's what Jesus did, doesn't have anything to do with us. We're supposed to be still fulfilling the same commission, right? Yes. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Are you brokenhearted this morning? There's healing in the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for you today. Yes. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Have you been in bondage? There's freedom again in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now I want you to go to Psalms chapter 34. Again, all of these scriptures are not just ones I, I looked up. But as I was praying, the Holy Spirit, Spirit said, use this. These scriptures are for the purpose of this message on this day. And it will minister to the people that are here. It will build their faith. And as they come up, they're going to see 
that they're not going to leave him like they came in Jesus' name. Psalms 34, 15. I, I like all of this. Which you get into the word, you find nothing bad. It's all good. Amen. If, if you think it's bad, it's just not rightly dividing the word or properly interpreting how you want to say it. Because God is a good God. Yes. He does warn us of things. And if we go off this way or that way, then it will cause us problems. But in reality, it is us and the enemy, Satan, who's causing us problems. It's not God's will still, right? But we're here in Psalms 34, 15. And, and the Lord said this. God said this. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears are open unto their cry. So if you have been in your closet, if you have been riding down the road, and you're broken hearted, and there have been tears, and there have been crying, and you said, where is God? He's telling you this morning, I was there the whole time. And I hear you. And I know you. And I love you. Right? How do you know? Well, you just read the word and take God at his word. The face of the Lord is against them to do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Verse 17 says this. The righteous cry. Now, who are the righteous? He said, I don't have this right, that right, or the other right. But we always are working on our life, but we're not perfect in and of ourselves regardless. We're not worthy in and of ourselves. We're worthy because of Jesus. Right? We, we're keeping our eyes focused on Him. If you look at yourself the rest of your life, you'd always feel like a failure. we got to get our eyes focused on Him. Right? The author and the finisher of our faith. The righteous, the word says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's got a new nature. He no longer has the nature of the devil. Then he's got the nature of God. The righteous are those in Christ. The righteous are those that have said, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, and I believe in my heart that God's raised him from the dead. Right? You might not be living right. That's something we've got to work out. Our sanctification, right? Is what takes place between salvation and our glorification. But we are righteous in Christ. Not ever in and of ourselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So he said the righteous cry. We could say the Christian. And be fine. And not be wrong. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. And delivereth them out of all their troubles. God does not want you to stay in the situation that you've been in. He wants to deliver you and he's made a way. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Dr. Hagen said one time they were up at a meeting and they were ministering and he got real frustrated. He didn't do any kind of attacking or anything, but they kept on. The preacher kept getting on over and over and over again, trying to get up money and trying to get the people stirred up. And he said, I, you know, I just don't, I don't know how we're going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how we're going to make it, but we got to have this and we got to do that. And he said, I finally got up there one night and he didn't believe in attacking people. So he didn't. He said, but I want to tell you something. He said, this is how it's going to happen. He said, Jesus is the way and the Holy Ghost is the how. Yes. Amen. Jesus is the way and the anointing and power of the Holy Ghost is the how. God's going to bring his will and purpose and plan to pass in our lives, in our churches, in our families. Right? Yes. So he said, the Lord, verse 18 says, the Lord is nigh unto them that of a broken heart. What he said in James 4, 8, if you draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. Right? That word nigh means what to you? near, right? So the Lord is near. He said, I feel like he's far away. The Bible says the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and say that such as be of a contrite spirit. Of a contrite spirit. That word contrite, I don't know if you know what it means, but it means to be crushed like powder or bruised. Maybe that's how you feel this morning. Maybe that's the way it's seemed in your life today. Well, I'll tell you and decree and declare, God has heard your cry. Yes. God is here today. I am not God. I'm a pastor. I'm anointed, but I'm a man. I have prayed and sought God, but what I'm saying is God's word. Yes. What I'm saying is what God has told me. Yes. I am the messenger. Yes. God wants to minister to you today. Yes. He may use me and Miss Larley to lay hands upon you. The anointing will flow through us, but it's the anointing that comes from God that loves you. Yes. The God that is for you. The God that has heard your cry. The God that wants to see you delivered yes. and set free. Amen. Who's already made a way through Jesus. Amen. Amen. And as we yield to the Holy Spirit, you're going to leave here different than you came in Jesus' name. Yes. He said this. Many, verse 19, are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. All of these are underlined in my Bible because they're so good. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of how many? Oh. You don't have a situation that God will not be right there with you every step of the way. Amen. Amen. Now I want you to go. Our last scripture for this morning, our passage, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 
We're going to start in verse 1. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Because see, there's God's part, and then there's your part, and there's my part. I want to tell you from the Word what is going to be necessary for you to do if you want to receive from God today and have an infusion of His power and His presence by the Holy Spirit. Amen? So you need to listen and take heed. We already know what God has said. He doesn't want you weighed down. He doesn't want you discouraged. He doesn't want you broken hearted. He doesn't want you frustrated. Amen? It's not His will and desire. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. We're going to read this passage here. And then I'm going to tell you a few things and then we're going to give you an opportunity. The musicians will come back and then we're just going to follow the Holy Spirit and God is going to minister to you today. Amen? It, it came to pass, verse 1, it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle, opposition. We could describe this whole story, but for sake of time I'm not going to. You'll see what you need to see as we read it. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazeth, however you say that, which is in Jedi, and, and Jehoshaphat feared. This is the right thing to do when you face opposition of any kind. Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. The word says God has not given you and I a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Some of you this morning that sit here, I know by the Spirit of God, you have a great fear of the future and how you're going to make it and how it's going to play out. And that's the devil trying to steal the remainder of, the remainder of your life and the future success that God has in store for you. Because he operates by fear. God operates where? By faith. And faith and fear are opposites. Right? He's trying to get you to buy a lie even though you may not believe it. You say, well, it could turn out that way. It could if we doubt God and believe the devil. But if we doubt the devil and trust God, it could turn out God's way and it will. Amen? Right? Yeah. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. And Judah, came, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, what did they come to do? They come to seek the Lord, right? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to see this prayer, and then we're going to see God's answer. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation, verse 5, of Judah and, and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God? who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever. And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein, for thy name's saying, If, when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and help. Verse 10. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Verse 11. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, the possession that who gave them? God, yeah. right? Which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. What do you, do you, I know this is the King James, but do you hear what they're saying? And maybe this is the way that you feel this morning. He's saying in verse 12 as he's praying, we have, with what we're facing, and I know this was a natural army coming. Yours may be spiritual opposition. It may be things you've been through. No matter what it is, it may be things that come through other people. I don't know that part, but he's got, they've got this army coming against them. And one thing they recognize, we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. He's saying, Lord, if it's just us, it's over. Right? And he says, Neither know we what to do. What's he saying? 
We don't even know what to do, which way to turn, which way to go, right? Yes. But what's he doing? He's consulting God. Yes. That's the right thing to do. He said, if you call upon me, God did. I'll answer and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Yes. Amen. Yes. This deal of coming to church, it's not about just coming to church. It's about relationship. It's yes. about knowing God. You can know him today. You can know him tomorrow. You can be at your weakest hour and time on a day we don't have church. And you've got access to the Father in the name of Jesus. Yes. And you've got to help her every step of the way, every day for the remainder of your life. By means of the Holy Spirit of God that has been given on the day of Pentecost and never taken away. We have everything we need to succeed. We've got the greatest support system in God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son and Savior, and the Holy Spirit the Helper that we ever need. You can make it and you're going to make it as you set your face and trust God and don't be moved by these afflictions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of how many? All of them. Whatever you're facing today, I promise you, it falls under the category of all of them. You do not have to be moved by these afflictions, even if you have been because God is greater. Amen. And where is God? You are children of God. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in this world. This is not a peace or a joy that comes from outside circumstances and situations to begin with in your life. We live from the inside out. It's greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. And there's others of you in here that you've been debating on giving up on your dream. And God said, you are wrong. You don't give up on what God has given you, even if you've made different decisions in your life. And you could say, uh, this has been a setback, and I'm at fault for this. You've asked God to forgive you. You're washed in the blood. You need to get back up and trust God like you never have before. It is the devil that wants to tell you, you sit down and you shut up. There's no way you're going to make it. You need to Rise up and be all that God's called you to be in faith and in the boldness of the Word of God. Know who you are. Know where you're going. You say, well, I don't know. Jehoshaphat, and they did not know where they were going, how they're going to make it either, but they saw God. They took God's counsel. Amen? We're trying to live our lives and we're getting in trouble because we're trying to live our lives without first going to headquarters and finding out what we're supposed to do. God has your answer. But see, the enemy through oppression, the enemy through bondage, the enemy through weighing you down and different things in your life. He may have got you to a place where you feel like you can't even go to God because you're worthless. That is always wrong. You don't go to God on the basis of who you are. You go to God on the basis of not only who He is, but who Jesus Christ is, was, and always will be. Amen? We go confidently, assuredly, and boldly, even if you are a failure in everybody's eyes. When nobody stood with, Paul said, when nobody stood with me, God did. There is one that's closer than a brother, any friend. God never, ever, ever leaves you nor forsakes you. It's time for some of us, all of us, to stand up and be who God's called us to be. And quit. listen to what the devil's been telling you. He's a liar, the word says in John 8, 44, and the father of all lies. You can believe him if you want to, and it's true, you'll go under. But you don't have to. I said you don't have to. Amen? Thank God. Where is the devil's rightful place? Under our feet. Yes. Under our feet. When the 70 returned in Luke 10, 17 through 19, they returned to joy, with joy. Why? They said, even the devils are subject unto us yes. through thy name. That name that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. <laughs> that name that's been given to you. Amen. Amen. Yes. You have authority over the enemy. We've got to realize today I'm not going to be who I've been. I'm not going to be defeated, but I'm going to overcome, and I'm going to win. And you sit and you say, I do not know. I'm going to get out of this situation I'm in. As long as you keep trying to figure it out, you're never going to get out. It might even get worse. You don't try to figure it out. You don't try to weigh it out. Sometimes you can figure it away for two or three years, and you still, you're no better off than when you started. We trust God, and he makes a way when there seems to be no way. Amen. Now, I've learned, and people think faith is A plus B equals C. Faith is a life. Yeah. Faith is a life of trusting God when you don't know what to do. You trust God. Matter of fact, when you think you do know what to do, it's still good to trust God. But this is something I've learned about God. It doesn't matter how wise you are. Even when you pray, you can think of ten ways that God is going to bring to pass what you pray and even believe he's going to do it. But just to show you that he's God, he'll do it in a way you never thought. Yeah. You never thought. I don't care how smart you are. I can figure out. I mean, sometimes I can think and might figure out a hundred ways and he'll do it. I never, it's never crossed my mind. We don't have to figure it out. You just got to trust God. That's all we got to do, amen? 
says it's, it's, it's hard. No, it's only hard if we have it then. But thank God we can make it a habit of daily trusting God, going to God with everything, not just the big things, but with the little things. And we begin to go to God with the little things in our life. Then they may not turn into big things. But even if you have big things in your life, again, God is greater and he'll see you through. So he said in verse 12 is where we're at. Will not thou judge them? We have no mind against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. But our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Where are they? They're before the Lord. They're seeking God, right? Yeah. Then there's an answer. And God told them what to do. And this applies this morning to you and me. Because the Lord said so. As I've been praying and seeking his face. Verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, and of course he's the prophet the answer has come through him but it's from God right the, the son of Benaiah <coughs> all of those different names there came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation verse 15 this is what he said this is what God said through Jehaziel he said hearken ye listen all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou king Jehoshaphat thus saith the Lord unto you be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. Do not be moved by what you are facing. Do not be moved by the opposition. Do not be moved by how it looks. Right? I'm not twisting the scriptures. what it says, right? Do not be afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours. My God, this is an Old Testament. We've been given a better covenant based upon better promises in the New Testament. He said, do not be moved. Do not be afraid. The battle is not yours, but God's tomorrow. Go you down against them. They still had to face them, right? We understand that. They still had to face them. They had a part. But he said, behold, they come up and they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Listen, I've got that circle. It's underlined in everything in my Bible. Because the first thing when we face opposition, me and mostly everybody I know, we want to go to scrapping and fighting and doing what we can to make it. He said you don't need to fight in this battle. Why? Because all you do is get wore out. Because yeah. the battle that you're facing is not flesh and blood. Yeah. It's a spiritual battle. Yeah. It's spiritual. We see very often, we deal with it in ministry, people getting upset. Very much of the problems that we deal with, we have to be careful not to get so focused on people because always, 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 even when there's major problems, the person has a responsibility, but it's actually the person yielding to the devil. Yeah. Now, their yielding is creating access, and we may have to deal with that, but we have to deal with our authority in prayer in the name of Jesus because it's not always a person. And many people go to fight people the rest of their life because they think their enemy is people and the devil's laughing because he knows it's him. Yeah. And everybody you try to straighten out, the more frustrated you get. Because yeah. it never works. Yeah. The battle's not flesh and blood. Amen? Yeah. We know that. Ephesians chapter 6. We're not going to go there this morning. <clears throat> but he said, where did I stop? Verse 17. Yeah. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still. And see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, if you go through the Bible that is said repeatedly, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Did you know that no matter what it looks like, when God is with you, if it's just you and Him, you are in the majority. Yes, and you shall overcome. Yes. Right? Yes. For the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground in all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. What did they fall before God doing? Worshiping. Again, this, there's a lot of message in what I'm telling you. But we're just talking about a little bit. Worshiping the Lord. What's the Bible said? He said, the word says he inhabits the praises of his people and in his presence is fullness of joy. What you're going to do this morning as we give you the opportunity to come down to the altar call is you're not going to be praying a regular prayer in English. You're not going to be praying in the Holy Ghost. You're going to set your faith before you come. And you say, I'm going to receive of the anointing in the name of Jesus that is available this morning. And then you're going to lift your hands and you're going to praise God even though you don't feel like it. Because praising and worshiping God in the face of adversity, in the face of affliction, in the face of despair is an act of faith. Faith is what moves God, if you want to say it that way. We worship God, whether we feel like it or not. We remember in Acts chapter 16, when Paul and Silas had cast the demon out of this, this spirit of divination out of this girl. Got locked up in the lock, stocks, and bonds in prison. What did they do? 
They begin to pray and sing praises unto God in jail. Now you might not be in a physical jail this morning. It may be a spiritual or fleshly, however you want to say it. But this morning, you may not feel like praising God. But there's something about when God's people begin to praise Him. Because what happens when you praise God? God, you are so good. God, you are so great. God, you are so merciful. God, I know that I face many things. But you've been with me every step of the way. And you're with me today. I know there's no lack in the Spirit. I know there's no want in the Spirit. I know that everything you give me in this Word, I know this available to me. I don't have to question your love today. You've already proven it by the greatest act that there's ever been that you love me. You gave Jesus to die yes. so that I could live in the same spirit that raised him from the dead has quickened and made alive my mortal bodies. I thank God you are my supply. I thank God in the natural. I might feel broken in all the pieces, but you said in your word that I was complete in you. Yes, I'm complete in him. Everything I need, he is yes. and I have. He's withholding no blessing from you. He loads us with His benefit and His blessing every single day. But the enemy, because of the situation and circumstances, He's allowed or helped some of us to go by the presence of God, to go by the Word of God and get caught up in our hurt and get caught up in our despair and get caught up in our grief and get caught up in what everybody else is doing. I'm not blue with your face and all I'm saying today is God's saying to you, trust me and I will see you through. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Amen. There's joy in his presence. So they begin to worship the Lord. And the Levites, verse 19, of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise. They stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. So they didn't need to go fighting. The Lord said, this battle is not yours but mine. This battle is not yours but it's the Lord's. Right? But did they have something that they were directed to do by God? Yes. They had to do what? They had to, or got to, we should say, worship the Lord. They stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Because when you praise God, you're magnifying God. And God as a being does not get any bigger. God as a being does not get complete because we praise Him. He's already complete. He lacks nothing. But in your life, and His presence in your life, when you praise Him in the storm, His presence becomes larger. And you'll see that in your life, He will become greater in your life the more you praise Him. Because when you praise Him, you magnify Him. Yes. And anything you magnify, what does it do? Become less or more. Amen. Your problem will seem smaller. And your God will be greater. I remember, and it just came back to me when my daddy, which a lot of my family saying, wasn't just my daddy, my brothers, and then brother and, and son and, and all of those things. I remember when my daddy died, when he left this earth in December the 4th, I remember going back to the church there. Nobody was there at that time. I don't remember which day it was, but it was right after daddy died and it was hard. It was hard and my mentality was, how are you going to move forward? How are we going to do this? And I knew that, you know, it'd probably be my responsibility, you know, to pastor the church, all these things, but I was looking at way more than that, everything that was going on. And when I went in there that day, I didn't see naturally, obviously, any mountains or any valleys, but when I went in that day, I felt like, and I, I got up on the stage, and I'm just, it's longer and bigger than this one, and, and I got up, and I was just walking back and forth. And when I started walking back and forth, the way that I felt was that I was walking in between mountains, all that was, that there wasn't an end on this end, and there wasn't an end on that end. I felt encompassed about, and there was a, a mountain all the way around. And you know, as I, I remember just right now this morning, by the Spirit of God, as the Holy Ghost brings us back to my remembrance, as I walked back and forth, and as I walked back and forth and prayed, the mountains did not get smaller. The mountains did not disappear. But I started out, I was in the valley. But when I got done praying, I was no longer in the valley. I was lifted up, and I looked down, and the mountains were still there, but they were below me. I was no longer down, surrounded. God lifted me up in the Spirit. I'm not talking about a natural. I was still on the ground with my feet. We're talking about spiritual. And I lifted up. And from that day, I realized, I knew to a degree, but during that time, I realized it's not in this life that you're not going to have problems. You're not going to have hurt. You're not going to have opposition. You're not going to have pain. But it's who you turn to during those times. Yeah. Everybody's going to have those times. Everybody's going to have pain. Everybody's going to have hurt. But you and I have an answer that this world does not have. Yeah. And when we face these things, we have to realize that no matter how big the mountains are, no matter whether you see a way, the Word says in John 14, 6, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father but by Him. So there is a way, whether you see it or not. There is a way, whether you feel it or not. There is a way, whether everybody's told you there's no way you're going to make it. I'm here to 
begin to tell you by the Spirit of God, that's a lie from hell. You're not just going to make it. You're going to overcome. Because you're more than a conqueror. Amen. We don't believe in the scratch by life. Jesus didn't come and secure a scratch by barely get along life for you and I. Yes. Amen? Oh, this is good this morning. God is good. Yes. Got just a little bit left here as far as the Word. Then I want to minister to you by the Spirit of God. In verse 20, they rose early in the morning and went forth in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so you shall be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Because what's coming through the prophet? God's word. What God's saying to us, right? Take me at my word. Believe what I'm saying. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Why did they call the singers out? What are they doing? They're leading them. We're worshiping God. We're praising God. Yes. Say, so, well, do I have problems? No, not as big as God. Amen. Do I have hurt? Not as big as God. Amen. Whatever it may be, right? <clears throat> 22, and when they begin to sing and to praise. When they begin to sing and to praise. Now, I'm going to get the, you know, you, you, I'm, not, I'm not picking on nobody, but you see people in the church sometimes that's always negative. And always complaining, they always down. Those things go together. Yeah, right. Complaining, griping, and grumbling is the language of doubt and unbelief, and it'll keep you down. Yes. But we thank God, praising God, worshiping God, talking about how good He is, and His mercy endures forever. You'll see. Oh, God will lift you up and raise you up. Amen. And He'll see you through. When they begin to sing and praise God, in just a minute, we're going to let the singers come up here. Of course, you can sing with them. We have the singers come up here, and we're going to sing. <laughs> You're going to come and receive, and whether you feel like it or not, because it's still the truth, you don't have to have a feeling. The feeling follows your faith. Yes. Your faith doesn't follow your feelings. Yes. And your faith is in the Word of God. God says, praise Him, so I can praise Him. Yes. I can praise Him when I feel like it, and I can praise Him on my worst day, feeling-wise, because His Word's still true. Amen? Yes. So they said, and when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set up ambushments. Something happened when they obeyed God by singing and praising God. The Lord moved. He set up ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and, Seir, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy <coughs> another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked into the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. How many of them escaped? No. That was their opposition, that they didn't have to fight against. They had to trust God, and they had to worship God, and they had to look to God as the answer. Amen. And he said, you don't have to fight in this battle, but we needed to praise him. We needed the glory, give him the glory and honor that he was due. That's not all that happened. I told you, your best days are yet ahead of you. This is a, this day you remember if you act on this word this morning. If you receive the infusion and endowment of power of the Holy Spirit that's available, this will be a day that you look back many years from now and you'll say, my life changed on that day yes. in that church because God's presence was there and His word was there and the Spirit and the word together as I received them has changed and altered the course of my life forever. Yes. You do not have to be who you've been. You do not have to face and deal with what you've been facing the whole you may have to face things, but you can do it by trusting God in a measure that you never had before. Amen? Yes. <clears throat> None escaped. Verse 25, And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance. This is the same people that were scared and facing the, these, these enemies, this opposition, and saw no way on this day. And what did they do? They saw God, and God did not even just deliver them. That's not even all that happened. Look what happens at the end here. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoils of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. This is the same people who were scared thought they were about to die. Yes. But they prayed and they trusted God. Yes. 
They trusted God. And he did not just barely get them by. He did not just say, you know, how many of them escaped? None of them escaped. None of their opposition escaped. And they did not just get by. The greatest work they had to do was gathering up the spoils. It took them three days. Yeah. It's the same people thought they'd about to die. Yeah. But they trusted God. And you thought there was no way for you to make it. Not only can you make it, not only will you make it if you trust God, but what else is going to happen? Today is going to be different. Today is going to be different. Tomorrow is going to be different. Every day is going to be different. That's why you needed the Word and not just me to pray for you. Amen? Because you don't have to feel like it. But I can stand here today on my best day or my worst day. Matter of fact, just try it sometimes. And if you're a person that prays, you know how you enter His courts. You know the first thing you do. Number one, I say, God's any sin in my life. I ask you to show me. I confess it and I repent with my heart right with God and my fellowship right. People don't believe, believe in repentance today, but we do. Amen? And then the next thing I do is I just take some time. Father, you're so good. I just love you. I just praise you. I just honor you. And it's how you just enter right into his presence. Because he inhabits the praise of his people. Y'all come on. He inhabits the praise of his people. And in his presence is fullness of joy. Y'all stand to your feet.